Well, how do there? Jums, tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, Jums, for you guys in the Viewerverse, I'm going to be visiting Colossal Archives and hitting up the lore. Now, I've got one behind me right here, as you can see there. Now, I don't know where I am inside of the loop of the lore, so I am going to be reading the lore from the old wiki. Um, but firstly, let's just hit up this, and I'll show you what I mean by the lore inside of these Colossal Archives. So, if let's head on over and let's hit up one of these. Chikapow! And let's see where we are. Greetings, brother. Knowledge storage access is forbidden to all but Viking. Speak now. That's pretty much what you get every single time you hit up one of these. The Viking archive is intended for own for its own species. Ancient audio equipment drones for low frequency. Seemingly expecting voice command. And yeah, you, you do one of these each time you unlock it. So I'm just going to hit Eddie there. There we go. Boom. Let's see if we get yeah archive access granted. Brilliant. Decrypt archive. That's all the same on every single one you get to. So here we go. The archive holds thousands of lines of poetry, a momentum to fallen traveller named Asteria. Okay, well Asteria was mentioned inside of the weekend summer lore of like 2021 or two. Anyway, I'll put a link up there to all the summer lore sort of synopsis. I have a full playlist though, but that's the summary. Anyway, let's hit this one up. Boom. Sing Astera, hero traveller, master of the blades of Herc. Okay, interesting. Of the endless battle, the sadness of loss, Atlantid, the price. It mentions the Atlantids right there, people. Look at that, the Atlantids are mentioned. So this is a Viking sort of uh, archive. Of mercy and of waiting, they who fulfil prophecy. Who Atlas made, Atlas sent. Harried Arons smote horror. Mm -hmm. Found the darkness at world's end, joined Viking's side. Pirate traveller, friend of the first, ally of heaven. What the actual fudge? Okay, cool. Well, that's interesting. Now, some of that lore probably wouldn't have made sense until the Singularity Expedition, which is part two of a four-part arc. So there might be more sense to be made of that. To hear that Astera had some sort of link to a pirate and also helped out Herc, and Astera went, well, Astera's got sort of like a side arc inside of the Summer Mission lore. So yeah, I've done a whole episode just dedicated to Astera, actually, if I remember rightly. If I can find it again, I'll put a link up there. But that's quite a tantalising little tidbit. And you know what, I think that might be the first part of the actual Lord lore anyway. So anyway, what I'm reading here is straight from the wiki. So here we go. The Divide, the archive composed of pre herc era Viking literature, much of which has already been purged by various inquisitors across the centuries. A sample of poetry. They found the Zanthef the Zanefakine, my people. They have come to kill them. They bring warriors. Blades and cries rings of ore honor. Daxin in one world, I on another. When the acid fell, when the glass tears tore the veil, the priest held me, the absence makes me sick, the Viking, our brothers, our friends, a people surrounded. Honor is not born from loneliness, remembrance heals the world. Our song, our wish. Pretty darn freaking cool. So that's the divide, apparently, an example of history and uh, poetry there. On justice and vengeance. Okay, it's justice and vengeance. Okay, the terminal is full of Viking philosophy, setting out a code of ideal behaviors. Justice is not thought, it is not a river ever changing, ever running. Justice is the truth of the universe, the wish of the Atlas, a testament of her. Like gravity, it brings itself into being. The task of warriors is merely to fall, to feel its pull, to fire that weapon that must be fired. Vengeance is a meal after a feast, unnecessary if the task is done correctly, unnecessary if the warrior is swift and true, but enjoyable sometimes to be a glutton. The young must, uh, must not follow such temptations, but the old? Gra, they shall hunt and they shall render the bones of those who wrong them in life, just as they shall battle. 
the hated in death. Pretty cool. That just kind of feels like some sort of war cry or something to, you know, to spur on the younger generation of Viking. Nothing too tantalising there, if truth be told. Okay, recording of Commander Uxis. A young Viking warrior speaks within the fighting pit. The bodies of fallen cowards fail to recruit and other criminals at their feet. They have fought for 50 days, given gra gra gas for each battle, fed from the flesh of circuits during each night, denied all the rest. Brothers, we fight upon a lie. We took blood across the universe for no reason than the word of a dead coward. I have such friends now, such family, the sentinels are not our enemy. We just lack proper instruction, we. And then it goes on. The Viking pauses as a shadow falls above the pit. Hundreds of blades fall from the cargo doors of a passing merchant vessel, impaling the heretic. Well, that's a bit of an unfortunate and coincident accident, isn't it? The vi- okay. The malfunction was deemed another miracle of Herc, really, in spite of the pilot's inebriation and ship status as gag. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, fine. Well, um, that's a fun story, isn't it? Oh, well, let's, let's follow on down. Okay, cool. From the Ballads of Horoff. From other references in the archive, Horoff appears to have been an early king of the interstellar Viking. Okay. Not heard of him. Not heard this bit of lore before. Gra, the death had doomed old Horoff. The plague that hides beneath the stars, Atlas Agony, monolith born, the two in one. The good king saw them in the end, heard the words of the ancestors all of their life, gave Hunt gift, honoured with battle song, wished the fallen warriors to life to sing, a chant of glass and heaven of honour. The sentinel bane faced the final horror, Gra, so did horror, perish in malice. That was a good king. So it does seem to be there's some sort of kingship with the sentinels and a few mentions of the realm of glass whenever they mention sentinels. So I think the Viking know of the actual origins of the sentinels as being the realm of glass. I think there's a little bit to be attained here really i mean this is past archives of recent of recent law you know so this is going back when herc was probably up against null in the great war dishonor this appears to be a philosophical tract circulated through the worlds of the outer edge the ancients speak of the geck of their change of their crimes but dishonor is unchanging crimes marked in blood do not fade we do not forget but we do accept we accept that it does accept since mean cubs. How can evil be suffered to live? Why does our fleet not go to war? Why do we not destroy the enemy of her wherever they exist? Whatever they call themselves, whatever the cost. All of this has happened before. The ancients teach us. There are many iterations, many dreams in all of them. We failed or lost ourselves in victory. They will come a day soon when the truth of Gek will be revealed. We do not need to fight. They will destroy themselves. I'm not too sure who they're alluding to there, to be honest. It's a little bit of an oddity, isn't it, that one? Hmm. Very odd. Anyway, let's uh, scroll on down. On the raising of cubs. Cool. The archive possesses a vast amount of information information on parroting and raising Viking cubs to adulthood. Much of it focuses on hostility and threat. It's interesting, isn't it? We see all these sort of NPCs here, but we don't see any cubs. We don't see any youngsters inside of the verse, not even at settlements or anywhere, to be honest. If cubs were a thing, or the polywiggles for the uh, gag, you would think that we would see the youngsters at some point, but no, there's no real sort of discerning difference between male and female either. You don't see many different body types other than this sort of slender one, even though we can make ourselves quite chunky chaps. You know, it's, it's not a tea, it's just something, just an observation, just an observation. Yeah, you might get a couple of these during these videos. The young cub will be born in fear. 
All were, are, and shall be so, bonded with their family alone. Contact with any other entity will invoke mortal dread. The fear of open spaces, of touch, of contact is overcome through two means, the brotherhood of entire species in the light of Herc. We are family, this must be taught. We once prey, now we are predators. All of a life in this universe shall fear us, just as we feared them. Fear will be our strength. That ancient cry, Grah! Our rallying call, our reminder to the interloper who dares to approach our being. They will be hunted, they will be harried. We shall not be afraid, we shall not be abandoned. Pretty nice bit of law there, and it does mention the young cub will not be born in fear. And that's why they're kept out of contact. So, yeah, that's probably why I don't see cubs. They're kept in their family unit until they're big enough to freaking punch our lights out. So maybe they're a lot weaker when they're cub status. Who freaking knows? Aha! And here's that sort of ode to Astera. That's, you know, that poem that I read earlier? Well, it's there. They're, they've now got the ode to Astera. The fallen traveller named Astera. So she isn't a Viking. She is actually a traveller of sorts. Anyway, I'll move on because you've already heard that at the start. So the unsilenceable voice of Null. The archive has been subverted, hacked to spread, banned censored messages of the distant religion. The Korvax are wounded, wounded, broken creatures, believing their death cries are logic. They drown themselves in communication, communion, sorry, to forget their pain. They shall not help us. The Gek, debased, accused, lacking their prior might, with no honour to replace it. Believe nothing will end. That growth can go on forever. It has been to the ancients and those who follow to discover our future, but what have they found? But dust, impotent gras, no. Tell me, friend, have you heard the testament of Nal? Nal is not dead. They heard what Kirk Herc would do, not could not. They live still at the right hand of God. They encourage us to show how we care, that we will not leave the Atlas's light. That devotion will never fade. Only through this oblivion spread, only through this will we be ready. So yeah, of course, the followers of Null were very much aligned to that of the Atlas. They believed the Atlas was God, whereas Herc felt that the Atlas was heretic. And, you know, so there was that conflict going between Nal and also Herc. Pretty sweet, though. Cool. Transcript. The Abyssal Hunts. The horrors be lie beneath the waves. They come in many forms. All of them corrupted. All of them diseased. Gra. The Gek says we should flee. Gra ha ha. They make good sport. We, tr we tied the Gek to the mast of our ship and entered the waves. No, really, that's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> Taxonomic scans and diagrams dance in the solid light across the planet's surface, showing what they encountered. The audio logs continued. Our vessel had five pirates on board, born outside of the light of Herc. I am the only believer, or was once. There is Corvax too, severed from their convergence. Interesting, Sinada's not alone in the severing of convergence. Interesting. They tell me creatures we hunt are not living, that the abyss is, is like death, like a disconnection. It is a great mistake that would never be mended. Oh, recent lore inside of the Singularity mentions of a disconnection and a burning of their world and their own convergence. So I think that is a hint. I think a lot of this lore, and I think a lot of what we're seeing in the Singularity, has been planned for freaking ages. Okay, let's move on anyway. Sweet. Further logs show the crew leaving the world with five captured abyssal horrors. They never made it back to their intended auction. In the end, the Corvax fed all of the other horrors before initiating self-destruct. Their last word, Atlantid. <laughs> and the Atlantid and all of these sort of crystals are now appearing inside of Verse, well they have inside a Singularity, which makes me think that, you know, all these corrupted sort of planets and the corrupted worlds and the Sentinels 
it, it's all related, all related to this archive type law, which means this archive law has been sitting here for some time. I honestly think this is all connected. I think this is going to be bigger. and I think there's going to be a big update this year, people, is where I'm going with this. Yeah, speculation heavy, but there we are. Okay, right, so we've got one more one more entry. This is the last entry, people. The last entry for now. I mean, they might add to these archives in time, but this is everything up to date. So here we go. The last testament of Herc. There lies the darkness, stars, the vast oceans, my friend. The moon rises, gra, the deep cries within the morning of machines. Gra, unda gra. Nights fall without its people. To die and da, we will come. I will come back. I will not leave you. I will never leave you. I will remember. These are once believed to be the final words of Har, Herc, before the High Command cast the matter into doubt. For a hundred years, an ecclesiastical college has debated their inclusion in official teachings, as yet they have no answer. All mention of Dayandar is discouraged under penalty of body harvest. What? It's not clear why or what this place is supposed to represent. After speaking these words, Herc the Great allegedly ripped their own limbs apart. It's death rite, followed by many Viking after an old age of vengeance and death. Yeah, so there's also some lore on the Viking when it comes to the ancient plaques of the Viking, and it mentions Herc tearing himself asunder there, and his screams were heard across the verse. Pretty disturbing stuff. But yeah, that's all of the actual Viking lore inside of these archives. And to show that it actually mentions the Atlantid, it mentions sort of befriending the Sentinels, which goes against other lore. So recent lore, pretty much of the Viking plaques and things, talk about a great war and the Sentinels being part of it and the Viking being very much against the Sentinels. So that's a little bit of conflict in terms, isn't it? But there we go, people. That's all the Viking lore to be had at the Colossal Archives to date. Yeah, pretty darn freaking lovely. I love the animations that they've put into here. But yeah, next episode, people. Next episode, I will be doing, I think, perhaps the Gek law. I want to kind of save the Corvax law to last, because I think the Corvax law is likely to mention, perhaps, Corvax Prime. Because Dian Dar, if, I'm, if I remember rightly, is actually the home world for the Viking. I could be wrong, and there could be two different worlds. One maybe for now, one for Herc. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, interesting stuff. And strange that there's a penalty of death for even mentioning it in ancient law, you know. But there we are, people. Anyhow, that's everything I have for you. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.